Hi everyone, Stock Mo here, and I gotta tell you, if you didn't have a chance to join us yesterday, I was invited on Felix and Friends channel. Absolutely had a great time, so I wanna thank him once again for allowing me to come over there, have a great conversation for an hour, just discussing EVs, different topics, and just a lot of great things for investors. So if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend it. Now, we are today going to look at some information that's come out that I think helps lead the way into that next bull market. I know everybody wants to know. Uh, it's easy to pile on right now. A lot of negativity in the markets. Uh, you're seeing China with lockdowns again, which is going to hurt the EVs. And I've discussed this many, many times. If you're going to have major lockdowns, and we, we can get into hundreds of millions of people locked down to stop COVID over there. They have their zero tolerance. It can lead to massive disruptions in the stocks out there that are related. Uh, you know, Tesla gets 25% of their sales in China, so that can be disrupted. We know that Neo, obviously, based over there, they're getting hammered. Xpeng's getting hammered. It wasn't just the Neo thing. So a lot of people ask me about the Neo stock price prediction and Neo stock yesterday, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to look at a lot of that. And before we do, make sure you take advantage of this. Get yourself the 10 free shares of stock from Moomoo Moo down below. All you got to do to get six free shares, six free shares worth up to $15,000, put $1 in. Put one dollar in and take advantage of this. You get a shot up to fifteen grand worth of free stocks. Use my link down below, and that's eighteen or older in the household. So, and then come on over to the Patreon. We have that. I have that link down there. You want to see my portfolios, what I'm buying and selling, all that good stuff. Join us on the private Discord. Highly recommend. Come on over and check it out. Now, uh, we, I wanted to start with this article. I thought this article was pretty good. And for those wondering what I bought yesterday, I'm going to go over the YouTube stuff in the portfolios at the end, and we can discuss that. All right, so take a look at this. Stock market bottom could be in, according to this midterm election seasonality chart. Now, we got in a discussion yesterday uh, over there at the live stream, and it got talking about politics and some other things. And it was awesome to come out and see this chart come out. And here you go. It leads right into what I personally feel, based on historical data, that we might see. And this article puts it in chart form, which is even better. And you can see some of the midterm elections they're talking about, S&P 500, the bottom, bottoming process and what they believe. Now, I already believe that we will see a bottom sometime in Q3, I believe. And then Q4 should be just really good. I believe Q4 is going to lead and start us off on that next bull market sometime in Q3. I'm not sure when. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have to wait until we get past the September Fed meeting, of course. I think they start to pull back on the uh, how aggressive they are. And I'm going to keep saying this until it happens. And I do believe that we will see it in September, that we might see 50 to 75 basis points, and most likely, depending because of that job reports. But I still believe we'll see July being pretty aggressive, 50 to 75 basis points. But that is where I think it'll start to end. And you will see in September a pulling back of how aggressive they are. That's my opinion on this. And then you're going to have the elections. I think you'll have a split government then. And I actually think the market's going to respond very aggressively in a good way. And I think from that point on, the Fed starts to pivot. You got the governments having to work together. And I think uh, you'll start to see that inflation will start to drop. That is my estimate. Doesn't mean it's guaranteed to happen or anything, but that's how I'm playing it. And this gets into it. And of course, they talk about one other thing. It's a really good article. I, I, you know, why I think it's a good article is because it agrees with a lot of things I talked about. And you can see here it says the playbook of the midterm elections seasonality chart in the second half of the year. Bottom and process is likely to unfolding here already. A potential trading range between 3650 to 4200 could last till October, uh, October 2022. I absolutely can see the sideways trading. We talked about this sideways, but it's a pretty big range right there. You're talking a good 15, 20% range from 36.50 up to uh, 4,200. So with that being said, they do see a breakout coming out, out there. And I do as well. I actually think that you will see the S&P 500. And I'll say it again. I actually think you'll see it trading up in the middle to upper end of the 4,000 range. I've talked about this many times. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does. We'll see if we can get up there to this 47, 4,900 range to finish the year out. And I know a lot of other people out there calling for the great stock market crash. This is the end, Mo. I'm selling everything. 
you know, and that's up to each and every investor. And the one thing I can proudly say is I don't come on here and say, you need to buy this. You need to buy that. I just share with you what I'm doing. I share with you my thoughts and opinions on different stocks and different things and uh, what I'm doing with my money. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, be well diversified. That's what I like. And I know some people actually would disagree with that. We talked about that yesterday as well. A lot of things we discussed. Now, uh, what do we got going on here? Next big move. And I wanted to talk about this because I think this is important. I think you're going to find out very soon. Uh, that we are in an official recession, in my opinion, because two quarterly declines of GDP, you know, that's the standard. Now you're going to have all kinds of people coming out saying, well, hold on here, Mo. There's other things that deal into this. Of course, everybody has their own definition of what something is. And so some people will agree. Some people will disagree. I am in the camp that if the national GDP is going backwards two straight quarters, that's not a good thing. And that's uh, that's a recession. And so others will look for all kinds of other variables to tag on to. And you can see, though, now look at that chart I showed you. Remember that chart I showed you over here, uh, right here? And this is the six months after, you know, where we're looking at right now. And just think about what it's saying is going to happen in the next six months, that we should move forward quite nicely there. So then we come over uh, to this chart, which says six months after the recession, you can see the average gain 7%, but a lot of it's 12, 21. Uh, you can see 14, 18, 17. And then you have the 7, 1, 6, little ones, 3. And then you have a couple that were just horrible back in the 80s, 19% down and 6% down. So two times it was down out of uh, a lot. So 82% of the time, we've had positive times uh, six months after the recession. Will we see the same thing now? I absolutely believe we will. And so there's your daily dose of hopium. I think we're going to see good things moving forward. I'm showing you a lot of data, a lot of different charts out there, a lot of predictions, a lot of history that says after we go through A, B, and C, this is what usually happens. Now, obviously, past results are no guaranteed of of future returns down the road. That's something we all know. Just because it happened before, like this, that, and the other thing, doesn't mean we're going to be sitting here collecting this much money at the end of this period of time. But I do like how uh, how the future is looking right now. There's definitely a lot of positive trends here based on historical data. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic, and that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Now, not being optimistic about this, take a look at how ugly how ugly uh, this thing was yesterday. Absolutely just disgusting. 10% down DraftKings, NEO 9%, uh, Lucid 7, Tesla 6.5, and, and then SoFi coming in only down 2.91%. But you can see the markets up there, NASDAQ crushed 2.26, Russell 2.1, and Dow Jones, not too bad, but uh, you know, VIX popping up again. Just a lot of ugliness. And a lot of people were asking, what's going on with NEO, Mo? And of course, uh, Neo is not alone in this down that much. But you can see if we go to some of the competitors, Xpeng is always a good one to look at. You can see it. That's down about 9% as well. So it wasn't like, hey, it's Neo specific. Uh, it's dealing with what? What's going on? Right here it is. Neo and other EV makers drop after China imposes COVID related restrictions. Once again, here we go. The restrictions are, are starting to go. We're, you know, the virus has mutated into a much more contagious virus. And China has the zero tolerance for those that don't know. They will lock down cities. They will lock down hundreds of millions of people. And that is something to watch, of course. And that will disrupt quite a bit of things. And it only is going to, if they continue to do this, it's going to have grave effects on the different stocks, the different markets, supply chain. So don't think, well, I'm not investing in these. I don't care. Well, you should, because if your company has any of the raw materials or any of their manufacturing or anything like that set up, through China, your stock could bear an ugly brunt to this. So definitely something to watch as we go forward. If you want a nice state, safe stock, consider Dominion Energy. That's a, a good utility stock out there. Now you can see the pre-market, at least at the time of me making this. Once again, awful red, not perfect. It's ugly. And uh, the oil dropped as well, down to 102.62. And had somebody ask me, where do you see oil kind of having a... a, a strong support at i think you know the next one we got down in the mid 90s before i think 95 96 is a good number for the resistance if it cracks below there of course i'm 
uh, probably, I don't know, we'll probably have to make some decisions. I have some stocks in my own mind that I like uh, as well. Going forward, I'm going to be making big moves in the next 90 days and taking some huge risk. I'm going to be blunt with you. I'm going to be going very, very risky uh, as we move forward. But if you want to see that, you got to hit the the subscribe button down below and the bell for notifications. Uh, we're going to be juicing it up a little bit. I got a pretty good game plan ahead of us and we'll see if it pays off. I'll continue to do the $100 a week challenge, but I'm going to be putting a substantial amount of money. I'll give you a hint into some uh, leveraged uh, assets out there and that's going to be coming up down the road. And you guys already know I have some now, but I'm looking to amplify that. So we'll see if we can beat the market or if it's a, a, a an unwise decision to go out there and take advantage of some of the historical data that is pointing to one direction. I believe uh, good things will happen. So here you go. Here's the new portfolio. We got it. I got VOO. You can see today we bought in uh, right around the low. You can see it dropped a little bit more. Uh, overall, though, 8.91%. The conservative portfolio, 11.83. Energy got hit again. And I added on Johnson & Johnson down 13 cents today. We bought pretty early and the market ended up tanking more. And you can see we bought some Tesla today, and that's in the aggressive 25.99. And oh, crypto, crypto, crypto. Look at this. It doesn't matter how many times I buy it. It continues to average down. And we bought some more uh, uh, Ethereum today, of course. And you can see it is down in, of course, 49.96%. That is a lot of money. I'm going to continue to buy Ethereum for those wondering until I'm not on uh, YouTube anymore. The same thing with VOO. I want to continue to show you if you buy long term dollar cost average into it continue to do this for the long term it can turn into substantial amounts of money i will say this for everyone watching and going through this period of time and in investing bear markets create opportunities that will create future millionaires for those who are greedy and everything else that you know did a lot of uh, wild risky behaviors they could lose a lot of money through this downturn but for those who are looking at this period of time like wow these stocks are just crush. Some of them are down 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. But I think uh, that they, they got the right tools to make that company just go crazy. This is the opportunity. I feel that way about a couple companies as well as I feel that way about uh, Ethereum as well. So I, I believe this is one of the best times in recent years to create future millionaires. And so, you know, I think uh, take advantage of that opportunity out there. So that's the update. If you haven't done it, hit the Moomoo link down below. Get those six free shares for a dollar worth up to fifteen thousand dollars and i got the weeble link down there put a dollar in there and you get six free shares worth up to twelve thousand six hundred for two bucks you get a shot at twenty seven thousand six hundred dollars do both of them anybody 18 or older in the house have them use the links take advantage of that and come over and join me at the patreon see the patreon only portfolios which i have roughly a million dollars in there uh doing my thing so we'll see how it does i appreciate you stopping by now let's get out there and make some money